everybody. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to our channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages. I post daily photos and updates on some of our animals. Those links are also in the description below. So for today's video, we got another new species to our collection. And this was kind of a special case. She is a very sick animal. And I'm gonna explain further in a second. But first, a little backstory. I was perusing on Craigslist and I came across this animal. Now, the person who had posted her did post what her current enclosure looked like, um, as well as some backstory information on her, but he didn't paint the whole picture. So based on the information that I was given, and as I said, I'll go further into this, um, we decided to go pick her up that it was something we could deal with. Now, when we got there, it was a little bit different story. So let's jump into the story a little bit. So as I said, I was perusing on Craigslist, came across this animal. Now, in the description for this animal, the original owner said that they had had her since she was a baby and that she was now four years old and that they have always had an issue with her shedding properly, eating, keeping the proper humidity in her enclosure. And I'll throw up a picture right here of what her enclosure looked like. Now, I don't particularly like tank setups. However, the way this cage is set up is not that bad. However, we figured out when we got there that it was not misted regularly in order to keep that humidity up. And that was probably the source of a lot of the issues that this owner was having, was just not doing proper care, proper maintenance for this animal. I just don't think they were properly educated on her husbandry needs. As I said, we decided to pick her up. I contacted them and we went and picked her up. Now, when we got there, I reached in to get, out, get her out of the enclosure. Now, he had already told us that she has never bitten, which now I kind of understand why, because her husbandry needs have never been on point, she's never been a good eater, this animal was slightly emaciated. Now, as you will see in some of the footage, um, you can kind of see her spine because she has never eaten properly and she is quite small for being a four-year-old. Let me show you what we got before I explain any further. So yes, we picked up a Sumatran red blood python. She is absolutely beautiful, but she is a very sick animal. Now, when we got to the current owner's house, um, I took her out of her current setup, which was a, uh, a tank setup. I don't remember the gallon. It was probably about equivalent to a 50 gallon or a 40 gallon tank. But when I picked her up, she did hiss at me, which there was no striking, no nothing. And I figured out it was because she doesn't have enough energy to even strike or do some of those normal behaviors that this snake would normally do. Now, when I took her out, I immediately noticed mucus around her mouth, as well as she was opening her mouth to breathe and she has deep raspy sounds, which are all clear indicators of a severe respiratory infection. Now with snakes, if you don't know, respiratory infections are quite common when husbandry needs are not met. And this can be spread quite rapidly through a collection. So that was something that was not disclosed to us. And we decided to take her anyways because we felt that we could provide better care for this animal than the current owner. And that we were better equipped to deal with this kind of issue. So we decided to take her home anyways. Um, I'm gonna kind of talk through the next footage that I'm gonna show you. So when we got her home in the container that we brought her home in, we noticed that she was completely dehydrated. Uh, of course, because the proper humidity requirements weren't met as well as she was probably just weak in general. So she wasn't drinking properly or eating properly. As soon as we got her home, we put some lukewarm water in this container and we let her soak and she immediately started drinking and didn't stop for a while. So as soon as she was done drinking, we kind of assessed her. She had a lot of stuck shed because she had never shed properly. And so this soak actually got quite a bit of it off. 
Um, we did notice that she had a little bit of stuck eye caps on the bottom, which you can kind of see in the video. It's kind of difficult, but you can see that there's stuck eye caps on just on half of her eyes. And then also you could clearly see the mucus build up and she was blowing bubbles. So we knew immediately that this is a snake that is definitely gonna be, have to be quarantined for quite a while. And we were gonna have to keep this snake away from our other uh, the other snakes in our collection, as well as we were gonna have to be very cautious about uh, keeping a clean and sanitary environment. After we got her done soaking, I set her up in a bin away from our other collection. And what I did is I did just straight paper towels and a good sized water bowl and made sure that her heat and humidity were on point before I put her in her container. And then I checked on her daily and we kind of left her alone to see. Now, after about two or three days, uh, we did soak her again. And then after the first week, we did notice that the mucus has gone down quite a bit. It's very much there still. You can still hear her wheezing, but not as much mucus, which is really good. After about a week of having her, she finally had a large bowel movement. Now, I'll show you in the footage right now of that large bowel movement. Wow, they weren't lying when they said blood pythons can really let go. Holy cow. Woo, that's a big duty. That is absolutely disgusting. All right, she's got a fresh new cage now. She's starting to sound a little bit better. We're gonna start treatments today. So yes, that was a huge bowel movement and it stunk so bad and I know poop smells but this was a very much rotting smell because she didn't she wasn't hydrated and because she probably she wasn't getting the right heat requirements she probably wasn't able to properly digest the food that she had eaten so it was literally rotting in her gut and it just smelled awful not to mention that you can see in the video that her little um, the little white balls white and yellow balls in there are actually from the snake and they were rock hard. At first when I opened it, I thought they might have been slugs because she is said to be a female. We haven't confirmed that. But then when I picked them up, they were rock solid because of how dehydrated she was. It was absolutely awful and I felt so bad for this snake. Now that it's been a week and we've kind of rehydrated her, she seems to be a little bit more active and curious. Of course, her temperament has changed greatly. She has not struck, but she is hissing a lot more. She, it, she does have a lot more movement um, in the cage as I check on her. Now I'm gonna show you in this video, we are going to be starting respiratory treatments at home with the F10 veterinary disinfectant. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of that footage right now. All right, so we're gonna be using the Reptifogger for her treatment this evening. And this is essentially all it is. That's the machine. This is the hose that comes with it and a one liter bottle that we are gonna go get prepped with some F10. All right, so this is the F10, and it has a little measuring thing right here. And we are gonna do just shy of the five milliliters because we wanna do about three. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in here and fill it up with water. All right, we have our F10 in our one liter bottle. So this part comes out of the nebulizer, or the fogger, I should say. Screw it on here. And then we're just gonna flip it over and put it on here. Hose is on here, and this part will go into her cage, and we're gonna turn it on for 20 minutes. All right, we got our tube in there. Now we're just gonna switch this on. One treatment down and she ate her meal at the same time. So awesome. Yeah, so the F10 veterinary disinfectant, what I'm doing is I'm doing three milliliters in the one liter bottle to dilute it in the Reptifogger. And I'm giving her breathing treatments for 20 minutes every day and I'm gonna do it for the next 14 days straight to see how much of that respiratory infection I can clear up on my own at home. Now, after that 14 days, 
if it is still very much present, um, I think me and my husband have decided that she will at that point be taken to the vet to see if we can either continue the F10 treatments, which a lot of vets don't recommend that, but it has been a proven treatment for at home. However, I have made the decision to do the F10 treatments because a lot of people have seen great success with it. Like I said, after 14 days, if it's still not completely gone or we're not seeing enough progress in treating the respiratory infection, we are gonna be taking her to the vet and gonna be getting either some kind of oral antibiotic or even the injectable antibiotics to get this cleared up. Uh, we don't wanna let this go any further. The owner did not say how long it has been going, but so far she seems well and she seems like she's getting a little bit healthier and she's more active. So I think we're making progress and taking the right steps in order to get this animal healthy. Yes, we uh, took in a very sick red blood python and I'm hoping that we can get her healthy and she will be a nice, beautiful addition to our collection. In a couple weeks, I'll probably do an update video on how she's progressing with the treatments as well as what steps we have taken next. And I'm hoping a month from now that we have a well-adjusted Sumatran red blood python. So also today, uh, Miss Nebula, our emerald tree boa, decided to come off her branch and get a drink on the bottom of her cage. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how she kind of hangs down and grabs a drink. And she was drinking for quite a while, so she must not have came down for a drink in quite a few days. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that footage right now. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video today and I will definitely get, keep you guys updated on our blood python and her respiratory infection, show you guys how we treat that and hopefully all is well in about a month. And I hope you enjoyed seeing Miss Nebula getting a drink from the bottom of her cage. So that is it again for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay sane. Get out there and make your own footprints. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.